Hi everybody, with the release of console update 1.08 for DayZ on Xbox and PlayStation and PC as well, I thought it might be good to go through the latest patch notes that have come out with the uh, the public release of, of, this, um, of this update. So, without further ado, let's go through. So, added. So what have they added to the game? The Sporter 22 rifle and its attachments. The lighter should be good for lighting fires the frying pan should be good for cooking things on stoves they've added direct cooking slots on the oven and indoor stove allows to allows to place both pots and pans or food directly so this means you should be able to um cook inside easily especially uh, you know when you're on livonia and it seems like it's raining all the time and you just want to cook something and you can't get a fire to light now you'll be able to do that inside. Um, but I understand what's going to happen is it's going to be a lot harder to light fires outside if the weather is bad. They've added cooking equipment, kindling and fire fuel can now be used to create a fireplace at the indoor stove or fireplace. You know, which is what we just said. Items can now be attached directly to the fireplace. I guess this is fuel, kindling and stuff. So there's now the interactive indoor stove. You've probably... Have I seen it already? Was I playing on PC? Um, they've added the biathlon area, or the biathlon air arena location to Chernish. So that's in the western... about On the western western part of Chernish, about halfway up the map, um, you'll find that area. And there's the San Roman Ski Resort. You may have seen... I've done a video about this already, wandering around. It seems like a really interesting place. Um to build stuff as well and explore so there's now new car wrecks on Chernerus and these wrecks spawn vehicle parts which is pretty cool um, yeah so the, so the idea of this is that instead of finding a car door in someone's shed which was always a little bit odd wasn't it you're wondering why were the why was the population of Chernerus and Livonia in the zombie apocalypse taking the time to dismantle cars and hiding them <laughs> hiding their bits one at a time those bits are now going to spawn on wrecks so you'll pull them off to, to put onto your vehicle that you want to fix there's uh, character sounds for running out of breath they've added st uh, so storage containers barrel crates and chests can now be destroyed by explosions gunfire and melee damage so you can, you can bash a chest to death if you want Tents, watchtowers, and fences can be destroyed by explosions, gunfire, and melee damage. Um, so, what they've done is that they've made it harder to smash your way into bases, but they've given us a few more tools to do that. So, you can now fire a machine gun at a, a wall, and it'll eventually get rid of it, or throw a grenade or explosive at a wall, and it'll eventually get rid of it. Watchtowers and fences can be repaired using tools and materials. So, again, as stuff gets damaged, you'll be able to repair it. Um, ruined containers and tents will drop their contents onto the ground. So, as you're smashing away at a tent, um, then it will, uh, it, when it when it collapses, the stuff should fall out. Now, this this is interesting because I think at the moment tents are pretty much indestructible, aren't they? You, I'm pretty sure you can't smash up a tent. So if what, someone, so let's say on my base on Chernerus, there's a couple of tents that are an integral part of the wall. But now you'll be able to, you know, smash them down. So there's the new canopy tent, along with colour variants. So these are the, you know, party type tents. Um, there's colour variants for the medium tent, and we've now got colour variants of the ballistic helmet. And you can now pull dead bodies out of vehicles. Something that we've always wanted to do. Now, there's lots of there's lots of fixes. I won't go through all the fixes because it would be boring. You can read those. I'll put a link in the notes all to down below. So look, let's look at what's changed. The console server browser can now sort by absolute population instead of percentage of slots filled. Cool. Hold breath sway pattern behavior has changed. So when you hold your breath to aim, uh, it'll be a little bit different. Hold breath stamina consumption is now non-linear. So what that means is when you hold breath to start off with, um, your stamina will go down a fairly slowly. Then all of a sudden it will disappear, and you'll be out of breath, and you, you know you'll be 
your aim will be all over the place. Fireplace ignition action won't show up if the conditions to light a fire are not met. So again, if you're outside and it's too windy or too too wet, you, you simply won't be able to try and start a fire. Fireplaces under exterior roofs will ignore rain and wind factors. The stone oven, by the way, if you make one, is immune to rain and wind effects. Items in fireplace cargo will get damaged and eventually removed when fireplace burns. The fireplace stone circle is no longer built automatically and also cannot be carried with stone attached. Fireplace bark slots merge, merged into one bark slot. The fireplace with the stone circle has a lifetime of two days. The stone oven lasts seven days, unless you interact with it. Reduce fireplace tripod inventory size and visuals. The barrel fireplace can be ignited anywhere except in water, but can douse when it is raining. The fireplace barrel, so the fire barrel really, the fire barrel can now be carried after the fire went out and can be carried with ashes. Tent windows, walls and windows, tent, tent windows, walls and window will have their state persistent over server restarts. Ah, that's interesting. Barrel and fire barrels will have their lid state persistent over server restarts. So if you leave it open, it'll stay open. Splitting one large stone now produces three small stones. Ringing out clothing now drives clothing faster. Well, I thought it did anyway. I've been wasting my time. <laughs> oh, I guess it drives it faster than it used to. Bark requires less size in the inventory. Wooden crates can now be dismantled. Ah, oh, that's good. Ruined items cannot receive attachments or items into their cargo. Combination of items also calculate the health of the final stack. Not sure what that means. Improved vehicle stability in closed spaces during the spawn. So, so that's an important one. So when you've got your car inside a car tent, it's more likely to still be there when the server restarts. Vehicle braking power is now increased over time instead of instantly. It should now be easier to find action widgets on base building objects. You know, when you, you, you go up to a... Um, say you've put a, a watchtower kit in and you've got to dig the foundations or put the posts in it can be a bit tricky can it as you're wandering around to find but they're saying that they've sorted that out disable the crafting of the spear for now but you can spawn it as a custom item the temperature tool tip no longer shows the accurate temperature in the ventry there's some rounding has been applied the in-game menu no longer opens automatically after death in multiplayer when a player is aware of their own blood type, it gets automatically added to blood bags the player fills with his own blood. Performance optimization for the watchtower. The wooden logs of the fence on watchtower base can be dismantled regardless of the direction. So it was always a bit difficult to do that. The destroy actions is disabled on all relevant tools because of balance reasons, but remains functional for modding. Interesting. The destroy action has been disabled on all relevant tools because of balance reasons, but remains functional. I wonder what that means. We'll have to do some more investigation. Barbed wire attachment slots for the fence and watchtower were moved to the material pile inside rather than left outside. Updated the textures of several farm and industrial objects better resolution of visuals. Raindrop sounds are now played on player-made tents. The landmine now explodes when destroyed, regardless of the armed state. Ballistic properties of metal walls on the fence watchtower to be much better at protecting against projectiles passing through. Ba base building dismantle action now returns materials according to the damaged state of the deconstructed part. Fireplace lights now fade by distance based on the type of a fireplace. The fireplace cannot be ignited in interior space with a ceiling height of below 5 metres. Now that's interesting. That is interesting. So it's saying you can't just start a fire in a, in a small room. Fireplace values for ignition, heating, cooling and fuel consumption have been tweaked. Oh, so this is tweaked stuff. We don't really need to worry about that. Reduce the noise of the Mark II. Yeah, I always thought it was a bit loud for a silenced rifle. Um, so that's it. Central economy added abandoned car parts into the setups, which are available on CarX, which we've talked about already. Added the new usage flag, Lunar Park, for items spawning with amusement parks. Okay, so you know normally usage, you'd have farm, military, that sort of thing. Now we've got Lunar Park. Um, change pristine car parts have zero 
now have zero nominal so they're only available on spawned cars so you won't find pristine car parts anywhere on the map uh, the HESCO box now has a zero nominal and very short lifetime that's the that's the little box isn't it lots of tweaks removed rag from medic tools cargo preset fix wrong category field mushroom fix wrong category for pelts Livonia change the HESCO box we've talked about that remove restock value from the field mushroom remove rag from medic tools fit right, server now this is very interesting this item here server added server config parameters disable base damage and disable container damage setting them to one will disable damage and destruction on relevant objects see our server config documentation i think this only applies to pc because we don't have access to the server config files on um on console but what it is saying there is on on pc you'll be able to set you'll be able to disable base damage so that people actually won't be after damage bases so you, you could you can make bases indestructible it sounds like which is very interesting indeed parameters necessary for the for the idle mode so the central loot economy will be paused when there's no player on the server change personal night light by default deactivated and we've got some known issues that are still happening so so very very interesting i mean overall obviously we get the new areas on chernerus with the ski resort and the biathlon arena or area we've got the new rifle we've got the frying pan we've got changes to cooking um, i guess f for lots of people it's going to be the changes to the way that base destruction works especially if you're on public servers or you're in on private servers with uh, a pvp um, base raiding uh, element too so it's all very interesting and um, yeah cool daisy gets another free update anyway that's enough from me i'll put a link to the show notes links to the patch notes in the uh, description below the video if you enjoyed the video hit like if you want to see more of the same press subscribe so much and i'll see you again soon